in our intestinal tract, in our stomach specifically, we're going to have mucus, kind of a mucus layer on the stomach that kind of protects from some of that acid. And over time, that can get worn down. And with certain bugs and critters, especially things like H. pylori, we can start to have a thinning out of that gastric lining. So H. pylori burrows in to that gastric lining and can start to thin it. And of course, chronic stress can also thin it as well. If we're chronically inflamed over time, IgA, immunoglobulin A can be thinned out. So chronic stress, especially high levels of cortisol, is very catabolic. And so if you look at the enterocytes that line the small intestine or the tissue that lines the gastric area, right, the stomach, usually you're going to need protein, glycine, glutamine, usually these type of amino acids really help provide good integrity for that gut lining, right? And so there's a protein amino acid constituency to help bring that integrity of that lining together. And so when we're catabolic, we're in this kind of stressed out, sympathetic nervous system state, we're going to break down that gastric lining and it's going to be a lot thinner and we're going to have what's called atrophic gastritis where that gut lining starts to thin and then the tissue, right, gas, gastric means stomach area and itis just means inflammation, right? We get issues in the tissues, if you will. And so we start to thin that out and that's a sign of a pain and inflammation. And you really have to say, okay, what is the root cause now? Now, conventional medicine, they're going to recommend Gaviscon, some type of a coating agent or some type of an acid blocker. Maybe they even go as far as steroids, depending on how bad it is. Obviously, if it's extreme and there's an ulceration going on there, yeah, you want to, you know, kind of go in Band-Aid mode, so to speak, kind of palliative mode because, you know, it could be life-threatening if, if there's a serious bleed going on there, right? Especially if it involves taking ibuprofen or, or medications that can accelerate the thinning and accelerate the gastric inflammation. Yeah, you want to be on top of that. But outside of that, most people are going to be in this kind of chronic, insidious state. It's not going to be an acute issue. And there's not going to be blood loss associated with it. There's just inflammation in that area. Now, what do you do? So you have to look at first, where are you at with stress in your life? If you have a lot of stress going on, that has to be looked at. You have to look at foods that can be abrasive. Gluten, inflammatory foods, refined sugar, excess omega-6 fatty acids. Um, I would also say flowers, grains, dairy, big things out of the gate. Uh, outside of that... Food allergens are going to be your big one. The big food allergens are going to come from grains, nuts and seeds potentially as well. Sometimes coffee can be a little bit irritating if the gut's already inflamed. Again, I find if you do coffee and you put some MCT oil in it or it's a really clean fat in there, that can buffer it and make it more gentle. But coffee may be an issue. Tomatoes, nightshades, nuts, seeds. But of course, the first thing you go to is just like the flowers. You go to the flowers, the legumes. Maybe the excess raw foods, raw foods could be an issue. Even if it's healthy green vegetables, raw foods, staying away from the flour, staying away from the grains, staying away from the dairy. These things are going to be really important out of the gates. Now, the next thing is, are you digesting and breaking your foods down? Well, before we go into any supplements, just make sure, are you chewing your food well? Are you breaking it down really well with mastication? Are you hydrating with your food? We don't want to be hydrating with your food. Water is a pH of 7. Your, intest your stomach's about a pH of 1.5 to 2.5. So... You add a whole bunch of 7 to 1.5 to 2.5, you're raising that pH up. And again, that nice acidic pH is really important for disinfecting. It's also important for activating proteolytic enzymes. It's also important for closing down that esophageal sphincter. So we have to have that good esophageal sphincter closing down, that good lowering of the pH to activate our proteolytic enzymes and also kind of disinfect the area too. 